Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today we got a project on hand to try to help get that barn built. Here's where we're at. If you remember a little while back, I built this thingamajigger extender, jib pole, jib crane, whatever you wanna call it for the front of my tractor. Up here I'll put the link to go and watch the video on building this if you're interested. This thing was built for one purpose, to hang the beams up at the top of the barn. When I built this, I added a truss structure to the top of it. One of my viewers sent me a message, and I appreciate him being very cool about the way he handled it. He sent me a private message saying, hey, you realize that doesn't really add any strength. Yes, I did. The point of doing this was to take the, some of the flex out of the pipe, not to really add a lot of strength to it. And his point was this, I terminate down here, right at the fulcrum point, this truss structure. And when I terminated it, actually all I did was create a spot for it to bend right down there. When I put this together, I wasn't really thinking that I was gonna use it more than once. You know, I keep it around and maybe I'd use it again, but it has become so useful, in fact, that I went back and added another truss structure that goes all the way back to the termination point. That adds strength. We're gonna build something today that's gonna to be a big brother to this. Here's the issue. I've gotta get those trusses that I'm gonna put up on the barn all the way to the top. And the way I calculated it, I need almost 30 feet to be able to get the trusses up. It's about seven and a half feet to the peak of the truss, plus my rigging, plus the 14 feet to the top of the beam. So I need roughly 30 feet of lift. Now, I could put it on the front of this tractor, but for some couple of reasons, I'm not going to. Now the bucket on this tractor is stronger than it should be. Meaning that the hydraulics are strong enough to actually tip the tractor over the tractor just doesn't weigh enough. So I would have to put a tremendous amount of weight at the back with 30 foot of pole hanging out in the front of it. But if I use my backhoe, it's number one, a lot stronger, it's a lot heavier, and the backhoe that's on the back already acts as a counterweight. Now, I don't really know what the backhoe will lift. It's a lot. I would guess it's probably in excess or close to two tons. The trusses weigh somewhere between 230 and 250 pounds a piece, according to the truss manufacturer. Now the gable trusses are doubled and they have the metal on the end of them, so those are gonna be heavier. If I take 30 feet, I create a very long lever or moment, and 230 feet can put a tremendous amount of force down here and a lot of flex force here in the pipe. So what I've attempted to do is to take some cabling, take this pipe, and use this pipe in compression rather than flexion by adding some cable trussing to it and not bend this pipe. Now for the pipe, if you watched my windmill raising video, you saw my good friend JB, who is a lot like me. He's got lots of good junk laying around. And when I was telling JB about the issue with this, he says, you know, I got something I think that will work perfect for that pipe. And he went out and scrounged around and came up with an old light pole. And this light pole is an old steel light pole and it's got a little damage at the bottom where a car hit it. But since we're using this in compression and the damage is not severe, I feel pretty comfortable using this pole. The pole's about 25 feet long. That'll give me all the length I need. And when I get the cable structure built, which will give me the link, uh, give me the strength over the length that I need. All right, so I'm over here at the bucket. This is the, the light pole. There's a, there's a dent right here in the light pole. It's nothing dramatic. There's a mounting base plate that would have mounted, uh, mounted this to the street. And so I'm just gonna take advantage of that. And what I need to do is come up with a structure to mount into the back. Once I'm done with this, I'm gonna leave it in the bucket. I can come along at a later time with a torch and cut it out if I want to. Now this bucket has a curve in the back of the bucket. I'm just gonna use some wider angle iron back here. I'm gonna weld it at the top, weld it at the bottom. Put a couple of holes through it for some bolts to hold it in place. Right now it's, it's off the bottom. I can get my hand underneath here. And when it's unloaded, I want it to sit like that. I don't want there to be any pressure against the side of the pole to cause the side of the pole to dimple or crease. I want the cables to take almost all of the stress, especially when it's unloaded. When it's loaded, the, you know, the cables are probably gonna stretch just a little bit. And I do have some turnbuckles so I can adjust that as necessary. Now, I need to figure out the curve here. Now, if I was John Saunders from NYC CNC or Tom Zellickman from Inspirational Metalworks, they would probably use some kind of really old, archaic method like a Fusion 360 or, or some kind of 3D program to take the measurements and draw this out. But here at Do-Right Fabrication, we are super state-of-the-art. 
we're gonna use something that they probably don't even know about yet. John and Tom, you guys need to watch this channel and make sure you stay with the trend. This is called cardboard. Probably never actually ever even seen it before except maybe when a new machine came to your shop. Essentially what I did is I just took a piece of cardboard and, and, I, and I tried to cut the angle out and, and put this in here to, to mimic my top and bottom angles. And then what I'll do is I'll transfer this over to a piece of, of angles. I use the uh, highly technical and highly sophisticated template to mark out on this piece of angle what I want to cut. I'm going to use the plasma cutter to cut it out, and the reason I chose the plasma cutter is because it's a compound curve. It would be very difficult to do on the bandsaw. Looking to just get it done, or nothing fancy here. I'm using my Lincoln Electric Tomahawk 625 plasma cutter. I've got it turned up to about 38, 40 amps, connected to my air supply. So I'm just going to plasma cut this out. We'll get it roughed in. We've got two of these to cut out, so it should go pretty fast. Get a grinder, get them shaped up, check them for fit. I've got my V205 TIG inverter over there. If you're not familiar with that, uh, that was the predecessor to the Square Wave 200. It's an inverter also. It's also an asymmetric TIG machine. It's a good stick welder, so I'm going to stick weld with it today. What I'm going to weld with are some Lincoln Electric 7018 Excalibur rods. Uh, when I was doing a lot of tank work, I really like these rods. These are kind of my rod of choice. Uh, I have a few packages of them left. And uh, I really like the way they run. So the plan is this. Um, we're just going to square this up and put a couple of tack welds on it. I'm going to unbolt the pole, move the pole out of there once I've got it tacked in place. Then I can lift the bucket, roll it into a much more comfortable position where I'm not all bent over on the ground and complete all of my welds. Here's a little something for you on these 7018 rods. Once you start them, they kind of uh, they kind of erode back in the hole, and it makes them a little bit difficult to start. So a lot of times, I just take my thumb and I break that little outside edge off them. And it makes them a little bit easier to start if they're giving you a hard time. Well, I like that. I like the way it came out. I'm gonna finish up the welds, but we'll go ahead and get all the bolts loose and crank the backhoe up, get the bucket in a little bit more comfortable position to work in. The old camera friend don't like me so much. I went ahead and just tightened the bolts up down there on that end. They're not even really tight. They're just kind of snug to hold everything in place. I also installed two little hoops. I used these on the, the other project before. I got them off the telephone company. Some of the power pole guys gave them to me. They're just hoops where they connect the guy wire to, from the pole to the ground. They work perfect. They got a three quarter hole through them, put a three quarter bolt in place. Already uh, drilled a hole there. Just like we did on the other thingamajig. It's got an, a bolt with one of those carriers on the bottom. So I have these two coils of 3 8 cable. In my old house, when we had Hurricane Ivan, Francis, Jean, we were all losing trees like crazy. And in my old house, I had a lot of really beautiful old pecan trees and the, the hurricanes were just playing hell with them. So after about the second hurricane, I went to the Orlando Utilities Company and I asked them if they had any of the old screw-in dead men that had been damaged or they had replaced when they did line improvements. And they, they were kind enough to give me a whole pile of them. Some of them I had to straighten up. But anyway, I took them and I screwed them in around some of the more, uh, the older, bigger trees. And then I took pieces of cable 
and I ran cable up around the tree with some uh, tubing to keep the cable from cutting into the tree, some soft flexible tubing. And when the next hurricane came, I just strapped them up to the tree in like a tripod position. So that way, no matter which way the wind blew, the tree would get some reinforcement and hopefully not uh, blow over. And it actually worked. I didn't lose any more trees from that point on. The point is I have all these cables left over. They've really seen very little use or very little stress. I actually have some, some turnbuckles that were in there that I used to take the slack up. So we're gonna repurpose those here today. And what I'm gonna do is take this short cable section here, go through the, the dead man eye here, take it up to the hook on the top of the tractor. I'm gonna do the same thing for that side. When I get done with that, what I wanna do is put a small truss structure here to keep these cables up and at a nice angle so that we don't get that, that slack pull. All right, so I'm gonna tidy up these cables just a little bit, um, make them a little safer, put some zip ties on the leftover pieces on the end here, coil up that cable on the end and uh, zip tie it up. And then we're gonna come back and uh, we're gonna build a structure here to, to act as a spreader. We are going to build our spreader. It's a little bit of a by guess and by gosh method here. I really have no exact plan as to why I decided to put the spreader here just because it's closer to the front it would take less metal and uh, we've got plenty of room right in here to work without using up a lot of material. <clears throat> I already pre-cut these parts. They're 16 inches long and honestly all I did was lift that out and went uh, about there. So I need to equidistantly space each one of these spreaders out. This is a, a contour marker and, and basically what this is is a level with a center punch in it. And this little level right here, when we get it leveled, we know we're right on the center of the top side of the pipe strike it gently a couple of times. We've got a little mark in our pipe right there. We now know that as the center of the pipe right there. Now the reason I'm going to do that is I want to know right where the middle of the pipe is. Use my next thing which is called a pipe wrap. You could really use a tape measure. This isn't that precise. Basically it's got a, a scale on it all the way around the outside. We're just going to measure it one, two and a half inches. So we, at two and a half inches we have a mark right here. And at one, two and a half inches, we have a mark right here. Now we know if we put both of these on these marks, we're equidistant from the center. All right, so we know where center is. We have our two equidistant marks. We're not gonna be super precise here. I've got my 210 MP over there. We're gonna put a few tack welds on these pieces, try to get them pretty equal. Then we'll get it all welded up nice and tight. everybody this lift and pull worked perfectly we were able to set all the trusses in place i hope you've enjoyed this episode and we'll see you real soon thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed what you saw here today be sure to subscribe to my channel and like us on facebook please somewhere down below here is a link we've got a lot more really cool stuff coming is that right camera guy is there a link down there send me a comment i'll try to get back to you as soon as i can Click whatever link. Click something. See you soon.